Let's say a storm gives you some roof damage or brings in floodwaters, or maybe it even knocks a tree onto your home. You want to know that you're covered. You want to know what your policy says. Well, in case you don't know the do's and the don'ts and the ins and the outs of insurance, Commissioner Causey, Mike Causey, is here with us today to explain some of those uh, very common things, but sometimes very complicated things. You can text him your questions for the next 15 minutes. That text number is 336-379. 5775 and you get your question answered in real time. All right, you know, this is one of those questions that we get all the time when we get a bad storm and it knocks out the power. People have full refrigerators and freezers and they're asking, what happens if I lose all of my food? Will my insurance cover that? Uh, no, probably not unless you have some, some type of special rider. So uh, normally no. Normally, no. So that may be something that you need to, you know, call your insurance agent and say, hey, do you guys even write that kind of policy and what does it look like? All right, let's now talk about roof damage because I know I was a victim of this not too long ago when hail came through my neighborhood and damaged my roof. A lot of people ask, if there is damage to my roof, will insurance replace the entire thing? <clears throat> not necessarily. Uh, one thing I do want to mention on roof damage, uh, if you discover roof damage, contact your insurance uh, agent immediately and report it. But uh, be really leery of people coming door to door offering to repair your roof at a reduced cost. There is so much scam going on with there's a, there's a lot of uh, unfortunately crooked contractors out there that that go from state to state, they're storm chasers, and they've been known to go on a roof and actually create damage. Uh, so you wanna make sure you know who you're dealing with when you hire a roofing contractor and make sure that you've reported it to your insurance company and that insurance adjuster has been out and looked at the damage. Right, because that roofing company can tell you all kinds of things, but your adjuster is the one who's going to say, this is how much insurance is going to cover. Now, I know a lot of times folks go, well, they said that they're going to cover part of my roof, but the shingles aren't going to match. And that's just kind of part of it. Well, that's right. It's, it's not uh, guaranteed that they're going to match exactly. Uh, the, the point is you want to get your roof repaired as close as possible to the way it was. All right, so let's talk about trees because those always go down during storms. Sometimes they go on a house, sometimes they go in a yard. Let's first kind of talk about if a tree falls on your house, let's talk about who's responsible for it. The homeowner of the house, uh, your homeowner's policy should cover that. And it doesn't matter where the tree comes from, whether it was your yard or your neighbor's yard. If it falls on your house, it's your homeowner's policy. That's correct. If a tree falls, if your neighbor's tree falls on your house, your homeowner's policy will take care of that damage. And we had a question already. Someone says, well, what happens if the tree falls on your car? that's in your garage is it your homeowners or is it your auto say it again the tr the cars in the garage uh-huh and, and the, the tree, tree falls uh, mm -hmm. so which one pays is well, it your homeowners or your auto insurance if your auto is the one that gets damaged the homeowners takes care of the damage to the structure the automobile policy would cover uh the automobile and uh, hopefully you'll have comprehensive coverage because you need that right and for people who don't know what comprehensive coverage is well you're only required to have uh, automobile liability policies in north carolina so if you want uh, comp and collision you know comprehensive coverage you pay extra for that but it's well worth it and as I've said many times before, make sure you talk to your agent about replacement value coverage, both on homeowners policies and automobile policies. You need to have that replacement value coverage because if you don't have it, you probably aren't gonna have enough money uh, to 
re to replace those items that, that need to be replaced because of the depreciation. And in the case of automobile, if you have replacement value coverage and your automobile is two or three years old, then your insurance company will buy you a current year brand new vehicle if you have that replacement value policy. So it's well worth a few extra dollars a year. Right, but if you don't have that replacement policy, what may happen is your car is now only worth, you know, $5,000, but you might owe $7,000. The insurance is still only going to pay you $5,000 for that car. That's exactly right. That's what you call being underwater. You owe more than the vehicle's worth. So make sure, if all possible, you get replacement value coverage. All right, replacement value coverage. That is the definitely takeaway from this first segment. We're going to take a quick break and we'll have more of your text questions when we come back.